Building a model steam plant using two engines. This is part two. Modifying the steam inlet tap and making the steam turret. I'm going to start by modifying the steam inlet taps. The two steam taps for these two engines are built onto two displacement lubricators. It's really a cosmetic thing because the hand wheels are on the right hand side of the displacement lubricator like this one. I'm going to modify one of these so that the tap is on the left hand side so I have a match pair, a right and a left. I've got the T piece part of the lubricator screwed into a union nut which is in the chuck. Before anyone writes in to tell me, I'm quite aware that it's not running 100% true, but the drill is bending and the tap is bending, so everything is fine. What I'm going to do is plug the other end, the end which normally takes the steam inlet, with this piece of bolt. This is a 2BA brass bolt, I've threaded the hole 2BA, so all I need to do is drill a hole down the centre of this bolt in the normal way, then I need to drill a 5 30 seconds hole in the other end to accommodate the shaft of the tap, then all I have to do is screw this piece of bolt with the hole down the centre into the other end. It's most important though that when the tap is shut, it needs to be in exactly the same position as the other tap when it's shut, so that they both match. It may sound complicated, but it's not really. By doing a test fit like this, I've realised that I need to cut about another three 2BA threads, which will allow the 2BA bolt with the hole in it to move closer to the pointer on the end of the shaft, and then everything will be fine, and when both of the steam taps are fully closed, they will be in exactly the same position as each other, so it will look okay. In this clip, I'm threading the hole at the opposite end of the steam tap, using this 2BA tap, and I'm being very careful not to overdo it, and cut the thread too deep down into the fitting. Well, at this stage, paranoia was setting in, and I thought, I wonder if I've drilled the hole in the centre deep enough. So I thought, well, I'll drill it a bit deeper just in case. But as it turns out, it was fine. In this clip, I'm using an equivalent of Loctite 603, and this will stop the threaded bolt that I'm fitting down inside the steam tap from ever working loose. So all I have to do now is just screw the steam tap onto this 2BA bolt, making sure that I get it in exactly the right position, so that the distance between the hand wheel and the gland nut on the tap is exactly the same as the other one. And just to make sure of this, here's the other one. Yes, that's near enough for rock and roll. I could have just made an extra steam turret with extra valves and remotely mounted these displacement lubricators with the valves on them, but it would have looked pretty stupid. I always like to do the job properly. So when this is finished, I think you will agree that it will look very nice indeed. Once again, paranoia is setting in, and I'm double checking to make sure that the steam tap is exactly in the right position, and it is. Now I'm withdrawing the steam tap because I don't want any Loctite that may be present to get on the thread of the tap itself. A steam tap that doesn't open at all is about as much use as a chocolate teapot. I've now put the steam tap and displacement lubricator assembly back in the lathe, and I'm drilling from the other end using a centre drill. The centre drill drills a hole in the end which is at 60 degrees, which will match a standard union cone. Here's a top tip. If you're using a centre drill to drill into an existing hole, like I'm doing, you may find that it chatters. All you have to do is just turn the lathe by hand, and it stops chattering and you get a good finish. And while on the subject of top tips, it's a good idea, after working on a part like this in the lathe, to blow it through with an airline to get rid of any particles of metal. But it's not the end of the world with a steam engine. Some people get really anal about steam engines. If any small particles of metal get into the cylinder, well, what's the first thing that's going to happen with a steam engine? Steam goes into the steam chest, condenses to water, and that washes any foreign bodies out before the engine even starts to run. I'm proudly showing off my handed pair of displacement lubricator steam tap combinations. I really did think it would be a good idea to retain the use of these because the genuine Cotswold Heritage Lubricator valve units. So now we just have a slightly modified pair of Cotswold Heritage Lubricator valve units. I'm also going to fit a steam whistle to the turret. In pretty much the same way as I fitted a steam whistle to the Stuart Models HB6 boiler when I last built a steam plant for the same customer. And the only difference is that on the HB6 boiler, because it's a very large boiler, the whistle was mounted on the boiler itself. This whistle is going to be mounted on the turret, which is not the ideal place for it, but it's very convenient. The steam valve is very accessible right at the front of the plant, 
so there's no need to reach into the plant and risk burning your fingers or catching your fingers in the machinery. I find that it's very important to sit and think before rushing into doing a job like this. I had a look at both of the engines, and both of the engines are machined from castings that are very square. Both of the main mounting frames on the Vulcan and the hypercycloidal engine are square in section, and that's why I decided to make the steam turret top square. If the steam engines had have been made out of lots of round pieces of metal for the main support frames, then I would have used a piece of tubing for the steam turret and silver soldered in the relevant bushes along its length. But this one's going to be square, so it's been marked out and it's now in the larger of my two lathes, and this lathe has a four-jaw self-centering chuck permanently fitted to it. I do like to save time, so for square section material I always use this lathe, and also for round section material, but for hexagon and round as well, but not square, I use the small boxford. Sometimes I let the lathe sequences run in real time, but most of the time they're highly speeded up, because all I'm trying to show is the principle of how the job is done. And I'm trying to show this to beginners, not to experts, but to beginners, but I don't want to bore them so much that they jump off a high public building. What I've just been doing while I've been talking about jumping off high public buildings is drilling a 1 8 of an inch diameter hole the entire length of the piece of square brass bar. I then counter drilled each end to a depth of about a quarter of an inch using a 7 seconds of an inch drill so that I could tap the hole quarter by 40 threads per inch. In this clip I'm drilling the three holes along the front of the turret. First of all I use a centre drill, then I use a 7 seconds of an inch drill because once again I'm threading these quarter by 40, which is exactly the same thread that is on the end of the displacement lubricator tap units as well as the steam whistle valve. This hole that's in the centre of the turret is drilled all the way through and it's threaded all the way through because at one side it has the whistle valve and at the other side behind the turret is the main steam inlet. When building model steam plants it's a good idea to pipe them using 3 16 of an inch diameter pipe from the boiler to the turret but this is not a high performance steam plant so 5 30 seconds of an inch steam pipe will suffice. Early this morning I went up to Blackgate's engineering because I needed some of this brass bar and I had yet another pleasant surprise. Another kind viewer had sent me a Blackgate's gift voucher which helped fund this because this stuff, believe it or not, is quite expensive. So I thank this viewer and any other viewers who sent me gift vouchers or donations or joined Patreon because it really does make a difference. So I no longer need to go down to the docks on a weekend and sell my body to finance making these videos. What I'm doing at the moment is a bit of total freehand turning, making it up as I go along, and this is very therapeutic. You can do just what you like, no rules, just get on with it. And the only measurements that I'm concerned with are the length of the column, and you can see the felt tip pen mark that I made on the brass to start with, and also the diameter of the end piece, the piece nearest to the camera. And to get the size of that right, I'm using one of these new fangled micrometer type things. The end needs to be half an inch in diameter to match the square piece of brass that's going to sit on top of it, and also I'm going to machine a very small spigot on the end, which will be 3 16 of an inch diameter, which will locate in a matching hole that I'm going to drill on the square part. The rest of the job you can just please yourself. You can do what you like, you can make it look like a ray gun from a 50s sci-fi film, or any shape that you see fit. But do bear in mind it somehow has to fit in with the steam plant, so if you make it too fancy it will look out of place. Once I'd finished the basic turning operation, I wanted to put some grooves in it, so first of all I cleaned it up with a piece of emery cloth, followed by some scotch brite, and then I centre drilled the small end, the 3 16 of an inch bit, I fitted a live centre in the tailstock chuck to support it at the outer end, and now I'm doing this with a small parting tool. Don't overdo it. It's a fine line between it looking really bad and looking tasteful. You do not want the column to look like a Dalek's eyepiece. What I'm going to do is fill these grooves with black paint, and if you look on the hypocycloidal engine you will see that the main ring gear and other parts of it are lined and filled in with paint. So I think doing the same thing to the column of the turret is a bit of a sympathetic application. In this clip I'm parting off the finished component, then I turn it round in the chuck and clean up the bottom face. And now I'm centre drilling it, followed by drilling into the work about an inch with a 5 seconds of an inch twist drill. 
and then I put the lathe in back gear and slow it down, although it's still running at a high speed, and thread the part. This is 2BA. And now it looks something like this. The next job is to dismantle everything and drill the hole in the centre of the crossbar. I don't need this hole to be very deep, it's just to locate the little spigot that I turned on top of the column. First of all I used a centre drill and then I drilled a small pilot hole using a 3 16th of an inch diameter drill. Now I'm using the D bit to make the hole just how I want it, not too deep and not too shallow. By using a D bit I get a very shallow hole with a flat bottom. I really can't miss an opportunity to say I once had a girlfriend like that, but anyway I won't. It's straight over to the silver soldering and as you can see I'm applying the silver solder just a little bit too early and I do that so that you can see it flash around the joint. What you should really do is wait until the flux takes on a watery appearance and then just touch the silver solder in place and it immediately flashes around the joint. I do it early so you can see the blob that then dissolves around the joint. Silver soldering is not a black art, it's easier than you think. All it requires is some practice and a powerful heat source and the right kind of flux and the right kind of silver solder. And once the part's cleaned up, it looks something like this. And I think you'll agree that sort of sits in with the plant quite well. It's also practical because there's enough room underneath the displacement lubricators to turn the water release valve. I've just made an adapter to mount the whistle directly onto the valve. This is made from a piece of brass hexagon and it's fairly self-explanatory how I make it. I screwed the whistle into the adapter using some Loctite 542 in such a position that when it's in place it faces away from the operator. As the valve is pressed the hot steam from the whistle goes in the opposite direction. The next job is to fasten all the components down onto this beautiful baseboard. But I didn't do that today because it was one of those days where I was dropping things on the floor so it was a bad omen. I'll do that on the next episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.